Alberta sees one of the highest divorce rates in Canada, and it's often children that are most affected. Now one MP is hoping to change the way the system works. He's put forward a bill that would require judges to apply the principle of equal shared parenting to divorcing couples, except in cases of abuse or neglect. But critics say the bill would risk even nastier court battles. Is equal shared parenting in the child's best interest, and in cases of bitter divorce cases, is it even possible? With us now to debate Bill C-422 is a Saskatchewan Conservative MP proposing the legislation, Maurice Vellicott. He joins us from Saskatoon this evening. And here in studio, Marie Gordon, a lawyer practicing family law in Edmonton. And from Calgary, Dr. John Amundsen, a child and family psychologist. Uh, welcome to Alberta Primetime, everyone. Thanks, Jefferson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll start with you, Maurice, just in a nutshell. Explain what this bill proposes and how it differs from the current system. Well, the present Divorce Act in Canada, the Federal Divorce Act law, uh, has, I think, by a lot of people, authorities and so on, uh, that work in this area, uh, Marie may differ with this, but uh, do agree that there's problems, there's uh, di difficulties with this as things stand. And so this bill is attempting to, based on uh, some of the recommendations that came out of the Joint House Senate Committee report, uh, for the sake of the children, is trying to get at that whole issue of the best interests of children and the presumption, uh, the, non, the rebuttable presumption of shared equal parenting, except in cases of proven abuse or neglect. And so uh, the sociological studies and all demonstrate that the best interests of the children are upheld by way of uh, shared equal parenting, different than just simply joint custody, of course. We'll talk about that maybe. Right. Uh, and so this bill uh, pushes it in that direction as countries, left-leaning countries, more left than we are, but Denmark and Belgium and Norway and Australia is kind of center right, if you will. But those countries have gone down this road and had some very good success at it and we believe then for the best interest of children of, of moms and dads and for society generally that we need to have changes along this line it's not a perfect bill uh, hopefully the kind of uh, adjustments uh, will be made in committee that okay. uh, satisfy many others as well okay so if I understand this Marie what we're looking at is is where we currently sit in terms of law is there really is no presumption of uh, any kind of uh, access to children right off the bat with this bill would do is give that presumption under law law immediately would be 50-50. Well that's actually not quite correct because our divorce law currently talks about one of the priorities that judges should look at is maximizing the amount of time that parents spend with children. So it's really not fair to say that that we're starting from uh, zero. Okay. We start from a legislative um, priority that insofar as possible parent we should have maximum time with parents and uh, so I really don't think there's any obstacles right now. Um, <clears throat> it is correct that there's no perfect uh, starting out of the gate presumption about what's best for each individual family and there are, are a number of really uh, quite serious problems with a one-size-fits-all presumption for every family. There's also um, really uh, some serious concerns about um, what I, I'm concerned is an ideological issue trumping um, uh, the best interests and the, the fact that we start that families are not one size fits all. Every family is different and there are really some concerns about imposing or forcing on every family a starting place uh, and so not only do we not need it, I think it's unnecessary given the huge amount of change that we've seen in divorce practice and, and parenting from 20 years ago when we had uh, very traditional templates. We actually are now, and I act for moms and dads, I, uh, I act for uh, all sorts of parents, uh, we, we have a huge variety of arrangements which are determined to meet children's best interests rather than parental rights. So that's the first thing. And the third thing is, is that we've uh, not only has this been thoroughly vetted before, um, but there are some real problems in jurisdictions that have actually adopted this. Although Mr. Villacott makes mention of it working well in Australia, that's actually not um, what uh, a lot of people have talked about. And in fact, uh, Australian uh, Attorney General is talking about actually pulling back and potentially scrapping this presumption because of the high problems it's caused in, in high conflict families already uh, and an increase in acrimonious litigation 
communication, which wasn't at all the intention, but when the rubber hits the road, uh, I think it's really important to know that this presumption might sound superficially attractive, like why wouldn't you want right. parents to spend as much time as possible with children? But when it plays out, uh, there are very serious problems. So okay. uh, we'll get into uh, more of these concerns and the specifics, uh, specifics of them in a moment. I want to bring you into the conversation, John. Uh, this is clearly always, uh, we hope anyway, uh, about the best interests of, of the kids. Um, first, give us a sense of what kids are going through while mm -hmm. these processes mm -hmm. are happening. And if you think that there is the potential here to sort of increase the challenges and, and, and increase the emotional hardship on children uh, as these cases progress. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, we have to state the obvious. Divorce has a high impact upon children, has an impact on, on, on everybody. Um, however, that impact is not necessarily enduring. We know that approximately 80%, uh, lowest number would be 75% of children experience no long-term uh, uh, impact relative to the trajectory of their lives based upon divorce. However, we do know that that robust 15 to 20 uh, percent uh, do. Um, the the uh, issue for children then is to say how do we enroll them in the 75 to 80 percent group and how do we prevent them from being enrolled in that 15 to 20 percent group right. where there is a long-term impact. And, and so do you see uh, the potential of, uh, let, let's say, uh, more bitter cases in court as having potentially a, a more negative impact on this experience for the children involved? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well the single most robust factor in predicting the impact of children long term is the management of conflict at the, at the yeah. level of the parents. Parents who are good at managing conflict uh, are more likely to have their children in the 80-80% group. P parents who are not good at that, um, uh, it, it, it uh, it doesn't matter, you know, okay. whatever, you can, you can legislate a frame of reference for them, but if they're not good at lowering conflict. See, children, children who are exposed to parental conflict are going to say this, if my parents cannot face these strong emotions, how am I as a child going to be able to face these strong emotions? Okay. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about whether uh, this bill would have an impact uh, on the, the case and how better it does get. Uh, more to come with our panel on divorce and the responsibilities of parenting after the break. Lawyers and justice officials have been trying to find a way to amend the Divorce Act to minimize squabbling between warring parents. The good news is that most divorcing couples are able to amicably resolve custody and access issues. They take the idea of the best interests of the child to heart by settling their differences outside court. Instead of handing over thousands of dollars to a lawyer for a nasty court fight, many divorcing couples go to family lawyers trained in mediation. They sort out difficulties in a collaborative way. It's cheaper and healthier than beating each other up in court, and the kids are better off. But there will always be divorcing couples who prefer a courtroom and a blizzard of hate-filled affidavits. Their primary goal is to destroy each other. Tory MP Morris Vellicott naively thinks he can melt the icy hearts of vengeful couples by changing the Divorce Act. His private member's bill would require judges to apply the principle of equal shared parenting, except in cases of abuse. Nice try, Mr. Vellicott, but you can't force bickering ex-lovers to be conciliatory just by changing the law. If they can't act like adults, a judge will just have to make decisions for them.